All right, so last class we talked about the law of conservation of matter and how in a chemical reaction, we can't lose or gain mass, right? We also talked about how individual atoms do not get changed into new types of atoms. So if you've got a certain number and type of each element in a reaction, those same numbers and types are going to be the same beforehand and afterwards. A lot of people miss that on that first daily quiz. So I just wanted to reiterate that during a chemical reaction, the only thing we can do is rearrange atoms, right? Imagine each chemical is kind of a, a specific Lego kit. You can put them together and they do a certain thing, right? It might be a boat, um, but then you can take it apart. And if you put it back together in a new way, it might be a car or a spaceship or whatever, right? Molecules and atoms are a lot like that in that the individual atoms are going to stay the same, but we can rearrange them in such a way that they become something entirely new, right? So molecules can change, but the number of type of individual atoms that make up those molecules cannot change. And today we're going to learn about how we can kind of make that work in terms of um, balancing chemical equations. So you know, we now know that mass can't change. We know that the number and type of atoms can't change, but how are we gonna go about kind of rectifying that with actual real world examples of uh, chemical reactions? Uh, here's a couple of things that we're going to answer today, right? We, we talked about the different parts of the chemical equation last time. We're gonna review that. Uh, how can we tell a chemical equation is balanced or not, right? Does this actually work with the law of conservation of mass, yes or no? And how do we balance the equations and how does that relate to the conservation of mass that we learned about last class? All right, here's our quick review. On the left-hand side of this chemical equation, we have these things called reactants, right? That is because they react, right? These are the things that we have prior to the chemicals um, interacting with each other and then afterwards, we would have the, the product. In this, we have four hydrogen atoms, right? Or two hydrogen molecules. Remember that the coefficient represents the entire molecule, but that subscript represents the atoms that make up that molecule, right? So if these were Legos, they might be Legos that have like, you know, the, the square and then one little circle on top, right? And we have two of these kind of plastered together, right? The oxygen might be the Lego that's got two little squares on top, right? And then those are two plastered together to make up my O2, right? And we have two of these individual guys that we can then reconform when we go through the chemical reaction. So far, so good? Ooh, Caleb's here. All right, on the opposite end, we have what we call the products, right? This is what is being produced by that chemical reaction. These are what we get after the chemical reaction occurs. And if we're going to count the number of total molecules, now we have two water molecules. Each water molecule would be one of the Legos that is a, the oxygen Lego and two of those solo Legos, right? Plugged into the bottom of that oxygen like that. So this is a water molecule, right? If you notice, we only have one oxygen here. We started with two oxygen. So we're gonna have to make a whole nother water molecule out of that second ox uh, oxygen to kind of keep consistent with the law of conservation of matter. And that makes sense. But if we look at the uh, actual coefficients and subscripts here, what we end up seeing is that if we have two water molecules, that is again, four hydrogen and two oxygen, right? that has to stay consistent. Let's look at a significantly more um, complex reaction. This is, in my opinion, the single most important reaction on the planet, right? If this reaction did not occur, uh, life would, would have ceased to exist a long, long, long time ago. So we have carbon dioxide, it reacts with water to form a sugar called glucose, right? Uh, and oxygen. What are the products of this reaction? Anybody want to field that for me? So again, the name to this is carbon dioxide, water, sugar, sugar, and oxygen.
What do you think, Gavin? What are my products here? I know you know. Take a guess. Who cares? Nobody's going to judge you. What do you think? Jordan's going to judge it. Ariana, are you going to judge him? Chloe, you full of judgment here? All right, you don't have to. I'm picking on you because I can see you, and that's really unfair. Thank you for showing your face. I appreciate that. Somebody else other than Gavin. You've been real nice, Gavin, so far. You're excused from this one. What about you, Jordan? You know? Derek? Ashley? Francesca? What are the products of this reaction? What is being produced? Sugar and oxygen. Thank you very much. Sugar and oxygen are being produced from this chemical reaction. Right? We start with carbon dioxide and water, and we make sugar and oxygen. These guys on this side are the products. So I'm going to write C6H12O6. I don't know, was that Ben? And oxygen. It sounded like Ben. Could have been somebody else, though. All right, what are the reactants in that case? So if these guys are my products, what is reacting with you know each other to make these things? Carbon dioxide and water. Thank you, Roman. Carbon dioxide and water are my reactants, right? So we're just kind of reviewing again the vocabulary. I'm gonna be using those words constantly in this unit. So if you have not written those vocabulary lists out in like a little, you know, note cards or, or however you guys want to do it, maybe it's not a bad idea to do that. Because again, if you don't understand what a, a reactant is and you don't understand what a product is, you're going to have a lot of struggles with every daily quiz because that's, you know, vocabulary I'm going to use every day. Uh, here, this is supposed to be an arrow, but obviously it did not translate into Google Slides. That represents what this reaction is yielding. What are we making, right? This is, the, this is like a, a transformation arrow. We transform the things on the left into the things on the right. All right, now let's look at our coefficients and our subscripts and see if we can figure out the number of oxygens that are in our product. And I'm gonna take this one um, because we're, we're, it seems like we're a little reserved on this Tuesday morning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each molecule individually. I have one of these whole molecules. I have six of these whole molecules. Okay. In this first molecule, I have six oxygen. And there's only one of them, so I have a total of six that come out of here. Six oxygen. Here. Each molecule is made up of two oxygen. And because I have six whole molecules, and that's six times two, I have a total of 12 oxygen out of this product. So that would be six plus 12. I have a total of 18 oxygen atoms on my product side. So far, so good? Now here's the question for you guys. If I have 18 oxygens on my product side, how many oxygens do I have on my reactant side? 18. Beautiful, right? We have 18 oxygen. Did you just do that math like extraordinarily quickly, Roman? Are you just like a math magician? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> You know, I appreciate sarcasm. How did you know it was 18 oxygen? Because uh, it's supposed to be balanced. So there should be 18 on one side and 18 on the other. That's for you, Roman. Double A plus, right? They have to be balanced. We have to have the same number on both sides. So if we have um, 18 oxygen on our product side, we have to have those same number and type of atoms on our reactant side. Well done. All right, let's maybe make a, a little one easier for you guys. How many atoms of hydrogen are in the reactant side? Well, I look at this first reactant, my carbon dioxide, and there are zero hydrogens there. Right, there's just nothing, there's no hydrogens in that whole molecule. There's none present, right? So the hydrogens all have to come out of this water. How many are there? Each water molecule has two hydrogens. There are six water molecules. That's six 
by two, that's 12 total hydrogens. Somebody other than Roman, how many total hydrogens are we gonna have in our product then? 12. <laughs> Gavin, 12. I'm so impressed, right? That's for you, bud. And this guy too. And maybe even one of these guys. You know what that is. It's a wizard hat upside down with snakes coming out of it. No, it's a party doodle just for you. Anybody know what this reaction is? I'll give you guys a hint. Mm -hmm. Photosynthesis. This is photosynthesis. Thank you. Who was that? Francesca? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful, right? This is photosynthesis, the most important reaction on Earth, right? Plants could do uh, do without animals. Animals can't really do without plants. Um, all right. Let's take another look at balancing equations now. We have uh, one of my favorite reactions. Really, any reaction that is something to do with combustion is one of my favorites. I'm a bit of a, uh, a pyromaniac, big fan of fireworks, big fan of fires in general. So know that we've got a fire right here. In this case, we've got methane reacting with oxygen. It burns and produces carbon dioxide and water vapor. All right, now how do we um, make sure that this reaction follows the law of conservation of matter, right? That's what we're trying to think about. We know that atoms can't be uh, created or destroyed as Roman and Gavin both kind of uh, indicated with their answers to those questions on the last slide. So how are we going to make sure that this reaction that occurs in the universe for real, right? I have done this personally. If you guys have a natural gas uh, furnace at your house, it's doing, it's happening all the time. So how do we know that this is going to, to follow the law of conservation of matter? Well, we know that oxygen has to come in twos. Atmospheric oxygen is what we call a diatomic molecule, meaning that for every molecule, there are two oxygens. Right, we know the shape of, of methane, right? That's one carbon here in the middle, surrounded by four hydrogens. So we know the stuff that's going in. We have to then balance the other side with those same number and type of molecules in order to make sure that we just rearrange those atoms, not, uh, not creating new ones or destroying any. So over here, we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. How many? We have one, we have four, and we have two times two and four. That means on this side, we need this exact same number and type of atoms. So we have one carbon dioxide, that's one carbon. That carbon dioxide comes with one, two oxygen. Here we've got two water molecules. Each water molecule has four, two, so that's four hydrogen. That's four oxygen balanced out. You guys dig this? They have to balance each other um, in that sense. Uh, if it is an, uh, an unbalanced equation, you have to change the coefficient. You can't change what we call the subscript because it changes the type and, and properties of that um, molecule entirely. And I don't know if I've told you guys this joke before, but we've got two chemists, right? Here they are. They walk into, you know, an old timey saloon style bar, right? They see the old, you know, be bewhiskered man behind the, the, the bar. Here he is. The two chemists, they say, you know, the first one says, uh, I'll have a, a glass of H2O. And the, the bar man is really annoyed because stupid patrons, you know, so he gives him a glass of water, right? The other chemist has a good laugh and says, I'll have a glass of H2O too. The bar man smirks, gives him a glass, right? The second chemist drinks it and he dies immediately. Why? H2O is water. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. Okay, now that that awkward joke is over, so that's why we can't change the subscripts, right? We have to um, 
change the coefficients. If we change the subscripts, we change the molecule, changes all of its properties. So when we try to balance these equations, never, never, never change the subscripts. Never change the subscripts, only change the coefficients. Let's try our hand. We'll see which of these equations are balanced and how we would go about finding whether or not these equations are balanced. Um, chemists across the board have different kind of methods by which they go about balancing equations. I found that the most surefire way uh, is, is to do these following steps. First thing you do is create a chemical inventory of your reactants. My, my pencil's dead, so my Handwriting is going to get real bad all of a sudden. You have my sincere apologies. We have these reactants, right? In those reactants, we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. I know, because of the law of conservation of matter, that in my products, I'm going to have those same type of atoms. So I'm going to have carbon, I'm going to have hydrogen, and I'm going to have oxygen. Now, is it balanced? Well, on the reactant side, I have one carbon. I have one carbon, I have four hydrogen, and I have two oxygen, right? One carbon here, four hydrogen there, one, two oxygen in that molecule. So far, so good? Hey, Paige. On this. Oh, no problem. I'll, I'll put that in the book. Um, on the right hand side, we have one carbon, right? Two oxygen from here. And then we have two, two water. So that's going to be four hydrogen. And uh oh, not two, four. Is this balanced? Yet. It is not. Right? We have too many oxygens on the right or too few oxygens on the left. It doesn't matter for this particular slide. This is imbalanced. Let me change my thing real quick. Oop, that's not what I wanted. I don't think that they're called guidance counselors anymore. I think I got they got mad at me the other day for saying that. Anybody remember what they're called now? Why do I keep pressing that? Hmm. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at the second equation then. I'm going to go about it the same way. Right, I'm going to look at the number and type of each atom that is involved. So on the reactant side, I have sodium, I have bromine, I have calcium, and I have fluorine. You guys don't have to know the names, right? I don't care if you guys memorize the names or not. It seems like an awful lot of effort for something that, you know, who knows if you're going to use. If you become a chemist, you're going to be using them so much that memorizing them now would be a waste of time anyway. We know that they're going to be this, we're going to have them on both sides, right? So we're going to have the same type on both sides. Next, we just have to count them. Here we've got one, here we've got one, here we've got one, and we've got two. On this side, we've got one, and we got one, and then, oh, already, I know. I don't have to go any further. This is imbalanced. Two, so far, two, so far, two imbalanced. Hokey dokey. We actually watched this reaction. This was the reaction of me burning that um, steel wool. And if anybody did that, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, again, I discourage you guys from doing chemistry without the proper safety equipment. But if you do, it's beautiful and lovely. Um, and don't forget to wash the steel wool beforehand or else you get that acrid black smoke. Uh, all right. So we have iron, we have oxygen, and we have iron, and we have got oxygen. So this one's a little bit easier. Oops. We got uh, iron. We've got oxygen on our reactant side we've got four iron uh, we've got three times two and six oxygen 
Here we have two times two, four iron, looking good so far. Two times three is six oxygen. Oh my gosh. Check. That one's balanced. Right, the first one that we have balanced. Let's check the next one. Tin oxide reacting with hydrogen gas. So in our products, um, in our reactants, we've got tin, we've got oxygen, we've got hydrogen. We have one tin, two oxygen, two times two is four hydrogen. Tin. Two times two, four hydrogen. Two times one, two oxygen. Oh yeah, two in a row. Check, check, XX. Last one, the rubber match. Reactants, products. Potassium, magnesium, bromine. One, two, two, one. One. Oh man. Imbalance, take it for the win. Questions or concerns about determining whether or not these equations are balanced. Now, I can understand the frustration. Uh, I started this lesson saying that they must be balanced, right? Then I go to this slide and show you that there are a bunch of them that are not balanced. So, What's up with that? Well, these reactions would never occur, right? Those reactions would not occur in the real world. Um, they would have to have more or less of one of the types of molecules involved, right? It's like when you have a puzzle and you're missing a piece. It, it's just not a puzzle, right? You just don't have all the, the right pieces to make it the picture that you thought it was going to be. So in these cases, right, what we would do as chemists is revamp the equation until it works, right, and, and that's what I'm going to show you how to do now, right, so let's say we run into one of these equations, and we see that it is imbalanced, how would we go about um, affecting it so that it actually follows the rules of the conservation of, of matter uh, and, and actually um, ends up becoming balanced? I would go about it the same way, Right, so in this case, this is not, they didn't even try to balance it here. Right, is it balanced? No, we have two silver on one side. We only have one silver on the other side, right? We have two oxygen on one side. This is absolutely not balanced. But sometimes, you know, all we need is one of each and sometimes it balances itself out that way. So it's never a, a bad idea to check. Now that we know it's imbalanced, we have to change the coefficients in front of each of the particles in order to find that balance, right? So I make my uh, atom inventory, and I find that the silver is not balanced, and I find that the oxygen is not balanced. So to balance out the silver, I can just put a coefficient of two in front of the silver on my product side, and my silver ends up being balanced. My oxygen, however, is also imbalanced, so what I have to do is I have to put the two in front of my silver oxide. Anybody see a problem with this? When I put that two in front of my silver oxide, right? Yes, I make my oxygen balance, but now suddenly I no longer have two silver. I have four silver over here. So even though I tried to balance it already, now this is imbalanced again. So I have to come back to silver. I need to change this to a four. Right, so we're now imbalanced in terms of our silver. So when I change that to a four, I need to change this to a four. Now we're balanced, everybody's happy. Except for my iPad, which is not continuing. There we go. So far so good. Questions and concerns about this procedure. All right. Um, we, we look at this, the first step is to take my atomic inventory, right? But then we figure out, is it balanced? If it's unbalanced, then we change those coefficients. On the left-hand side, we've got one carbon, four hydrogens, and two chlorine. On the right-hand side, we've got one carbon, one hydrogen, and one chlorine. Hydrogen's imbalanced, chlorine is imbalanced. 
going to let you guys have a second, see if you can do this in your heads, right, before I kind of bully through. How are we going to balance this? All right, what I would do. Hmm. Message just dropped out there. What I would do is I would first try to balance my hydrogen. I really don't like this. So this is an odd number and chlorine has to come in even numbers, right? Because the only thing on my reactant side is that Cl2. So it's gonna be two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, whatever, right? I'm never gonna get myself to a five chlorine. So I'm gonna to try to change my, my chlorines on this side somehow. And to do that, I can change my hydrogens, right? So if I change that to a four, make that coefficient four. Now I have four chlorines here four chlorines here, that would be eight chlorines here, right? And to balance this out, now it's really tempting to just throw an eight up here and call it a day. But we have to remember that these chlorine comes in sets of two. So instead of an eight, I would write a four for a total of eight, everybody would be happy and we're balanced out. You guys want one more practice or you guys want me to let you loose on the, um, worksheet for today. Give me a party doodle if you want to be let loose. Give me an oh no face if you're looking for a little bit more practice before we break away. Whoever said a single vote didn't carry anything. There we go. At least two folks voted. All right. Both of you guys are looking to get let loose. All right. How about this? We reconvene at 11... 10. That'll give you guys 20 minutes to work on that. Um, we'll reconvene at 11.10 and we'll go over that worksheet really quickly. And then you guys will have your daily quiz. Then you guys will get out of here um, and I will see you on Friday. All right. So we'll reconvene at 11.10. Good luck.